YouTube, welcome back to my channel, jpm.cuisine. In this video, I'm gonna be doing a quick demonstration, not necessarily a comparison, but we're just gonna look at these four knives and how they cut through some butternut squash. The first knife we're gonna be looking at is the Daostrung Shogun Series X 8-inch Gyoto. It is the OS 10 v that's been updated from VG10 previously. As you can tell, the profile on these knives are very different, or from the Daostrung is very different from the three uh, other knives that we have. We've got the Enzo HD, which is made in Japan by Yaxel. We have the Kuma uh, 67 layer VG10 Damascus. And we've got the Tokage uh, Japanese VG10 Damascus 67 layers as well. Um, the Tokage and the Daostrung both have the G10 handles and the Micarta handles are on the Kuma and the Enzo. The handle should last you a lot longer than some of your wooden handles. The biggest difference between the profile, as you can see the belly on the Daostrung is more pronounced. Um, there's also a variance in weight. So without any further ado, let me move my bowl out of the way. We'll get into the cut demonstration. So the Daostrung, if you notice, is gonna have a much, uh, a much more contoured handle compared to the other knives. Uh, we've got more of a pinky groove and a rounded belly for your hand to get a better grip on. But for me, since I use a pinch grip, typically my middle finger is gonna be resting on the choil itself, depending on how well the knife is made. There may be a bolster that's in the way, um, but if it's an unfinished or unpolished choil, typically I'll end up with Scarring, usually a callus or some blistering that will occur here. Uh, the other thing is I'll typically get some blistering or some calluses that will form here from being over the top of the spine if it's not polished. So those are typically the battle wounds that I get from working during Thanksgiving, which as you can tell, didn't occur this year because of the knives that I'm using. So without any other stalling, let's go ahead and cut off the stem area. So with the Dow Strong, and here comes the family and they're talking. <laughs> so with the Dow Strong, uh, it's got a lot of weight to it, so it makes it easier to cut through things using just the weight alone. Um, and let's go ahead and cut into the core. And as you can see, fairly sharp, just a little bit of effort. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the Enzo in order to cut down through the center. So we've got the Enzo HD, uh, much lighter knife, uh, much different profile. Uh, and I'm gonna use the entire, from the tip down to the heel pushing through. And the Enzo, I believe, has a much thinner spine, so it typically can go through, th go through things a lot easier. So after having split that, we're gonna go ahead and cut some slices into um, this squash using the Daostrung. We'll just go through, we'll cut maybe a, a one inch little slice out of it using each so we can just get an idea of what we're dealing with. I'll move these out of the way. And so just a push cut. Um, a little bit of drag, not too much. Very easy to go through that area with this knife. Um, the blade again is sharp enough that it would just travel through uh, without any real issues. Next one is the Enzo. Again, we use the entire length of blade so we get a fairly easy cut as well. Um, no splitting. All right, we'll go to the Kuma. Yeah, about an inch. Now this one has some resistance going in. Um, <clears throat> as we go through, this one required a little bit more oomph to make it through. Uh, some drag on the edge just because of the polish, but not as smooth as the Enzo. And finally the Takage, which again is sharp enough, uh, will cut right through as well. This one has more of a mirror finish, 
similar to the Enzo, but the Enzo has the hammered Damascus finish on it. So the Dow Strong, basically with the weight behind it and with gravity or whatever, it helps make cutting butternut squash and sweet potatoes, all your very thick rooted vegetables, you can chop through that like it's nothing. Uh, you've got a lot of weight behind it, it makes it easier for you to cut through and I think the design of the knife works better for that. The other three knives, when you're cutting through uh, onions or tomato or celery, whatever it is, these things excel at slicing. They are phenomenal for that. So these knives excel at doing different things. The Dow Strong is great at chopping. It's got a lot more weight behind it, so it makes it that much more uh, efficient in, in chopping. But the other three knives, you know, they excel at typical slicing, dicing, whatever you're doing in the kitchen. This is where the profile and, and this is where preference in terms of how you cut really matter. Pushing through, let's do a, let's see if we can do a straight chop through. So we're gonna try to push down. So the Daustra or the Kuma will get, uh, and I can't go any further than that. Um, let's go ahead and try the Tokage. Okay, the Tokage will go through, very sharp. Let's try the Enzo. Enzo goes through, fairly sharp. Let's go ahead and Try the Dao Strong. Dao Strong will go through, uh, but we get into the seed area now. So, just gonna go through and do some quick cuts here uh, using each one of the knives. Uh, just pay attention to how they cut through. Um, nothing special here, but if you notice, the Kuma has struggled, it's sort of lost its edge. It's not cutting through as easily, and you can, you can tell the difference. So, in terms of ease, I think the Enzo is probably the sharpest of them all followed by the Dao Strong and then the Tokagi and the uh, Kuma. Boom! All right, so let's give these knives a quick wipe. Sorry if I messed up that top shot by hitting it with the drawer. So I'll give these a little bit of a clean. Now, one thing that I haven't uh, stated in that I want to make fairly clear is that the Tokage doesn't appear to be um, very high in iron content because it's less magnetic. I usually will put all my knives on a magnetic holder and the Tokage is the only one that doesn't stick well enough that it just falls. Okay guys, uh, hopefully it catches it. So just be aware that I'm not 100% sure what the composition of this knife is, even though it's uh, VG10 Super Steel. It doesn't appear to have the same metallic composition as the other VG10 steels that I have. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut into this one. I'm just gonna remove this portion so we don't have to uh, deal with it. And that was an off-center cut. Clean it up. There we go. And as you notice, the Dao Strong, because it has that really thick belly and that nice heel, this one uh, is almost ideal for these tougher vegetables. It, it feels like you get the best lockup and the best grip on using this one. And that's probably why I reach for it because I feel more confident in the cutting of this knife. Um, the Enzo is more like a scalpel. It's very clean to cut through. Um, and if you like that sort of uh, feel, I think your, this one might be your best bet. And the only reason I suggest this one over the Tokage is I like, first of all, the hammer look appeals more to me. So that's very subjective. But the handle, I feel, is more ergonomic than this handle and fits better in my hand. So when you're looking at these knives and comparing them, that's one thing you want to take into consideration along with the metallic composition and the ability to hold an edge is the handle type. That's one of my concerns with the Global G2s is that the handles don't look very comfortable compared to uh, the other knives that I use. 
The Kuma is exactly identical to the, uh, the $20 Chef's Knives that they offer. Uh, so you're very familiar with that handle if you have it. I do like the micarta finish on it, and I think that was a very good uh, way to go. Um, but it seems rather thick compared to the other knives, so it's a little bit thicker. Um, I would like for it to be a little bit uh, thinner or definitely in the taper, as you can tell. But it goes down, and it's, it's fairly decent, and I love the way that they've uh, really profiled the contour of the belly so that you get a lot better uh, rocking on it. Uh, very similar to the Tokage and to the Enzo. Okay, so let's go ahead and give the Tokage one final look. And I mean, it cuts through very easily, so you could essentially save ten dollars and go with this, but if you do have uh, a, ma a magnetic hanger that you use, this one will not. So you're gonna end up having to get a sleeve for it so that you can put it in the drawer or find somewhere else to hang it. Uh, maybe a block because this one's not going to work very well on your magnetic holder. Um, the two that I reach for most are the Enzo and the Daostrong. The Kuma was a recent uh, acquisition, so I haven't had much time with this one. It did get some play time on uh, Thanksgiving, but I think I need to redo the edge a little bit more just to get it how I want it. I think I can uh, make it a little bit sharper um, so that I can get better use out of it. But I think in terms of edge retention, their $20 chef's knife uh, would maintain its edge for four months. so. This one will probably go even longer. Um, but in terms of sharpness, it's just not as thin as I'd like, I think, tapered towards the edge. And that's why the Enzo and even the Takage have a little bit of a leg up in terms of getting thin slices out of something. The Daostrung, I don't really even attempt that because it is um, probably one of the thicker of the spines, but it tapers off so well. And it just feels, I don't know, maybe it just feels intimidating because of the size of it. But I mean, it's pretty good in terms of edge and sharpness. They all seem to perform you know, almost identical when it comes to doing their tasks. And while it may take a little bit more effort to make chops with these, it's not like any of them are essentially the, the one and done or the perfect knife for every uh, instance. I don't think you're gonna go wrong with any of these knives, honestly. I think if you purchase any of these knives, you're gonna have a very good experience, but it's just gonna come down to sort of which handle uh, preference you have and the profile for the blade. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Kind of an impromptu look at these four VG10 knives that I have. Um, maybe some people will wonder why I compare these. Primarily, I compare these knives because I have them and because on the market they're around the same price. A um, few comments that I've received are that, you know, the Enzo's are semi handmade versus the other three being machine made. Well, if it's semi handmade, it sounds like there's still some machining in the process. And even if they're machined, it still usually will be sharpened by hand uh, at some point or polished by hand at some point. So, not quite sure about the comment on the validity of the comparison because of that nature. I do it because these are very identical in price and they're available on the same platform. So if you go to Amazon, you'll, you'll see all four of these knives for sale. And as a consumer, it'd be difficult to try to make a decision because, you know, on paper, they all look alike. Now using them, unless you can afford to buy all four and then come up with a conclusion, that's what I'm here for, is really to have that opportunity to show you them side by side so that you can sort of make a educated guess 
on which one might perform better for you. Um, in terms of my preference, I like the Enzo handle the most and I use this the majority of the time because uh, of the weight and balance. For tougher tasks, I go directly to the Dow Strong, knowing that this one uh, is sort of the workhorse. The Tokage, because it's not magnetic, it's not in sight, I have to put it in a, uh, a protector and I put it in the drawer and then I never think about it until it's too late. And the Kuma is still fairly new. I haven't had a chance to really get acquainted with it. So I need to spend at least a week with it to see how I feel. Uh, honestly, I really go for the $20 Kuma that I have the most or the majority of the time. And then when I want to spoil myself is when I go to these. But honestly, the $20 Kuma can get the majority of the things done that I want in my kitchen anyways. So these are more of a luxury item for me. Well, um, that's pretty much all I have for you today. Um, I'll do some more comparisons and again when I get to the four month mark I'll do my full reviews on these knives uh, but for now I hope you enjoyed if you want to check out some of the content on my Instagram page it's jpm.cuisine uh, if you enjoyed the content go ahead and give me a like uh, subscribe for more content and as always feel free to share any comments with me in the comments section I love to check those out and I love to respond uh, so we can get a conversation going and always talking about these knives as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the Boom. next one. And through the magic of television, we are able to uh, do that in no time flat. And I think I just hit my camera. I did. Again. And again. And again.